Flat Earth Falsities, Gravity, Density, and Buoyancy. One of the Flat Earthers' biggest objections to the spherical Earth is gravity. They have somehow convinced themselves that gravity is not a real thing or that it cannot explain how things are held to the spherical Earth. These objections to gravity are just more Flat Earth falsities. They take several forms, so I will discuss them one at a time and show how each one can easily be proven wrong. 1. Gravity does not exist. Okay, so I have to start here because Flat Earthers really say this. One of the biggest lies believed by all people of the world for generation after generation is the one involving gravity. When I tell people that gravity doesn't exist, they look at me as if I were a madman. It's hard to know exactly what they mean by this because it is so obviously false. When pressed, they will admit that objects are always pulled down, but they will make up all sorts of excuses about what it is that causes this that are other than gravity. I will address these individually, but for the purposes of this video, when I say gravity, I simply mean that common universal observation that things are pulled down. We can all agree that that occurs. It doesn't really matter what you call it. We will talk about the cause of gravity later, but we first need to agree that the downward pull we all experience is real. And we call that downward pull gravity. If you don't agree that things are pulled down, please see a psychiatrist as soon as possible. You are delusional. It should be easy. You can just float to one. So really, Flat Earthers accept that there is a downward pull, but their real problem is with the direction of the pull. Apparently, they think that there is just a universal down direction and a universal up direction, and things just want to go down. Well, that is simply not the case, and literally tons of evidence proves otherwise, as I will show. When talking about gravity on Earth, down is toward the center of mass of the Earth. I think they are getting confused with different uses of the words up and down. We tend to say up north and down south, but that has nothing to do with gravity. That is just a human convention that came out of the way we make maps. A map like this looks wrong, but there is technically nothing wrong about it. We are just used to seeing a map with north at the top. It helps us to have a consistent way to look at maps. So, north is oriented at the top, and south at the bottom. But that choice was arbitrary. It had nothing to do with gravity. There is no force south of the South Pole pulling on things. Nothing. Nada. South is not down in the scientific sense. Really, children understand this, yet many adult Flat Earthers amazingly somehow do not understand this. The pull of gravity near the Earth is always directed toward the center of the Earth. I will talk about the tremendous evidence for this fact. Claim number two. Gravity has never been proven, or is just a theory. This one is only slightly less ridiculous than gravity does not exist. Gravity is ridiculously easy to prove. Countless things we see every day here on Earth prove gravity things that we tend to take for granted. Just drop an object and watch it fall. That proves the effect of gravity. In science, we prove things by making repeated observations and watching the results. When the results are so consistent that we can make accurate predictions of it with great certainty, then it is considered scientifically proven. With gravity, we can make many predictions that never fail to be correct. For example, we don't just know that things fall, we know how fast they fall. Falling objects actually accelerate faster and faster as they fall. The rate of acceleration on Earth is 32 feet per second per second. In other words, in the first second, a dropped object will accelerate from zero to 32 feet per second. 
and in the second second, it will continue to accelerate by another 32 feet per second. So now it is going 64 feet per second. And this will keep going until it hits the ground or until it reaches terminal velocity, which is the fastest it can go due to its wind resistance or other frictional forces. Another prediction we can make is that an object thrown up at an angle will always form a parabola shape as it arcs back down. Any good baseball outfielder is able to catch the ball because they are very good at predicting this parabolic path. If gravity were not a consistent force, that simply would not be possible. We also know that gravity is based on mass. This is easy to show because you can pick up a baseball, but not a car. The car has more mass, that is, more matter stuck together than the baseball. I like to picture it this way. Every molecule of the Earth pulls on every molecule of the baseball and also on every molecule of the car. But since the car has more molecules, the overall pull is stronger. In addition to what we observe here on Earth, we can also observe gravity out in space. One of the best examples is watching the moons of Jupiter orbit the planet through a telescope. They move fast enough that you can actually see their positions change in a single night. And most significantly, we can precisely predict their positions at any point in the future because we understand how gravity controls their orbits. Check out any space simulation software like Stellarium that can show their future positions and then go look for yourself to see just how accurate it is. This also works for asteroids and comets. Ancient peoples predicted the return of recurring comets, such as Halley's Comet, for many centuries. But they did that only by observing the patterns. Now, we can accurately calculate their paths using the laws of gravity. Even when a new comet or asteroid is discovered, after careful observation of its path for a time, we can calculate and accurately predict its future curved path around the sun. When flat earthers say gravity has never been proven, I think they are confused because the cause of gravity is not fully understood. We certainly do understand the effects of gravity very well, as I have already explained. And we know that it is always based on mass and distance. But while we may not entirely know why it works that way, that is not the same as being unproven. You probably don't understand how a microwave works, but you know it will heat your burrito. The prevailing idea of gravity is that it is caused by a bending of the fabric of space-time itself, like a funnel-shaped fabric causing a small ball to circle the heavy ball in the center, as in this demonstration. Objects with mass are drawn to each other due to this bending. This is a problem physicists are still working on, but the cause of gravitational effects is irrelevant. It need not be fully understood to be scientifically observed, tested, and proven. Number three, gravity is just density and buoyancy. This one just shows how confused flat earthers can be. The way they use the term density is not correct. Density refers to an object's mass compared to its volume. A ping pong ball and a golf ball, for example, are about the same size, but the golf ball weighs more because it has more molecules. We say it is more dense. It has more molecules of matter in the same amount of space. A ping pong ball is filled with air, so the molecules are spread out more with more space between, so it is less dense. Density is a factor in how objects interact with each other, but alone, it does not cause the effects of objects falling to Earth. It cannot cause it. There is no way the density alone can convey action in a particular direction. How does a ball know which way is down? Of course it doesn't. It moves down because of the consistent downward pull of Earth's gravity. Flat Earthers will say that objects fall only because they are more dense than air. 
But we can easily show that is not true, because objects in vacuum chambers with all the air removed still drop to the bottom. In fact, if you put a golf ball and a ping pong ball in a vacuum chamber where there is no air resistance, they fall at the same rate. Same thing goes for a bowling ball and a feather, as demonstrated here. This is due to the fact that the only factor that actually causes objects to fall is Earth's gravity itself. An object's density, shape, or weight has no effect on how fast it falls in a vacuum. All objects fall at the same rate when an air resistance is not present. This is conclusive evidence of the consistent, measurable force we call gravity. Buoyancy is also misunderstood by flat earthers. They actually have this exactly backwards. Buoyancy is a direct result of gravity, not a defiance of gravity. A helium balloon goes up because helium is a very light gas. It has less density than the air around it. So gravity pulls down on the air a little stronger than it does on the helium balloon, and this forces the balloon up. The same goes for a cork in water. The water is more dense, so it is pulled down around the cork, which forces the cork up. And again, the direction of the buoyant action is always up and down, never sideways or any other direction. Gravity deniers have no explanation for the consistent direction. Here is a very simple experiment. Put a ball and a cork in a filled water bottle. The ball drops to the bottom, and the cork floats to the top. Now, turn the bottle over, and they will switch positions. No matter how you turn the bottle, the cork will seek the highest point, and the ball the lowest point. Everything in the bottle is being pulled down by the external force of gravity. The ball is the most dense, so it has no problem pushing the water out of the way. The cork is the least dense, so it cannot push the water out of the way. The weight of the water being pulled down by gravity forces the lighter cork up. Density and buoyancy alone do not explain these effects, as flat earthers try to claim. Only the consistent downward force of gravity can explain this. Number four, gravity is just air pressure. And that's the same with the air. We are here on the ground, quite low to the ground, and the air pressure on us is quite extensive. It's quite a force that we all know. And um, maybe the higher up you get, uh, the less pressure the actual air is putting on you. Same principle as this. You don't need to have the earth being a certain mass and creating a force which pulls you down to the ground because the pressure of the air at this level is already pushing us down. This one is really funny because air pressure is caused by gravity. Flat earthers who say this are simultaneously accepting gravity and denying it. What do they think causes air pressure? Air pressure is nothing more than the force of gravity pulling down on air molecules. This is very plain to see, as the air pressure decreases with altitude. Air molecules rest on each other, all the way up to the edge of the atmosphere. The pressure is greatest at the surface because of all the air above pushing down on the air below. The amount of air above gets less and less as you ascend. This effect is so consistent that an altimeter gauges altitude simply by measuring air pressure. Again, this only works because of the consistent downward force on everything. The same goes for water. Water pressure increases with depth. As the deeper you go, the more water there is above weighing down. Rather than a substitute for gravity, air pressure is another conclusive proof of gravity. Number five. Gravity is just electromagnetism. This is trivial to debunk. Electromagnetism only works on ferrous metals. Gravity works on everything with mass. Try picking up a cat with an electromagnet and then try to tell me it can be the cause of the gravitational effects 
we see everywhere. Number six, gravity is selective. Flat earthers sometimes ask, how can gravity hold the oceans but allow butterflies to fly? Or why aren't we crushed if gravity is so strong that it can hold the oceans? Well, this is based on another misconception. They seem to think it is hard to hold heavy things down to the earth. No, that is backwards. It is easier to hold heavier things than light things. Heavy things like water react more strongly to gravity than light things. Like I said before, that is why you can easily pick up a baseball, but not a car. The car has more mass, so it reacts more to gravity, not less. Oceans are very heavy, so they are pulled very strongly to the earth, while a butterfly is very light, so it can easily fly by flapping its wings to create lift, counteracting gravity. Flat earthers seem to think that there is some force trying to pull the oceans off the earth, but there isn't. What force do they think that is? Do they think there is a pull south of the earth? No, there isn't. Why would there be? What would be the cause of that? They simply have taken for granted their whole lives that things are pulled down, but cannot wrap their heads around the fact that the down they experience is always toward the center of the earth, not some mysterious universal down that has no explanation. They also think that the spinning or other movements of the earth must be trying to fling the oceans off. This is also wrong. The earth only spins once per day, so the centrifugal force caused by that is very weak. In fact, it is only about 0.3% as strong as Earth's gravity. So gravity easily overcomes that force, and we don't feel it. But we can actually measure it. Objects actually weigh about 0.3% less at the equator than they do at the poles, due to the weak centrifugal force. The Earth's other movements also will not try to pull the oceans off the Earth. The Earth's orbit around the Sun and the solar system's movement around the Milky Way galaxy, and the galaxy's movement in relation to other galaxies, are all constant, steady movements. There is no acceleration that would cause any problem for the oceans staying stuck to the Earth. Just as you can hold a glass of water in a constantly moving vehicle without spilling it. Everything, including the water, is moving together at the same speed. But, speed up, slow down, or turn the vehicle suddenly, and the water will slosh out of the glass. These are all forms of acceleration. The Earth never experiences acceleration, just constant movement. So no ocean sloshing occurs, and gravity has no problem holding the oceans to the Earth. Number seven, water finds its level. Water does not bend. Water always remains level. No matter what you do, no matter how far you go, if you put water in any type of container, that water is always going to be level. Yes, water does find its level. But flat earthers are confused about the meaning of the word level. They seem to think it means straight or flat. But in this context, level means perpendicular to the force of gravity, not flat. Over the short distances we can typically see, the surface of water will appear to be flat, but it is not. It curves with the surface of the Earth. The Earth is really, really big, so the curvature is very subtle. It takes 69 miles to curve just one degree. So the curvature of water is just not easy to see from the surface, or even high above the surface. But as I have pointed out in other videos, the Earth's curvature has been measured for centuries using geodesic surveying techniques. And experiments over water, when done properly, clearly show that the water curves with the curve of the Earth. Flat earthers sometimes say gravity cannot bend water. But that is absurd. Of course it can. What do they think bends water at the crest of a waterfall or at the top of a fountain? Of course, it is gravity. Water reacts to forces. This is plain to see. It will always flow to the lowest point it can. 
When squirted up, water will always curve back down to Earth. These effects are obviously caused by gravity. What else would cause it? It is gravity that causes water to find its level, but that level is perpendicular to the force of gravity. Do flat earthers think that water somehow knows how to find a level? No, it is pulled to a level state by gravity. And since the direction of gravity is toward the center of the Earth, water naturally curves with the Earth. A bubble level works on this principle. Gravity pulls the liquid down, forcing the bubble up to the highest point, allowing it to indicate when it is perpendicular to the force of gravity. How do they think it works? It boggles the mind. They also sometimes say that rivers would have to flow uphill. Once again, they are misusing or misunderstanding a word. This is called the equivocation fallacy. Uphill means up away from gravity. Rivers never have to flow uphill in relation to gravity. They flow from points farther away from the center of the Earth to points closer to the center of the Earth because that is where the direction of gravity is. Going around the curve of the Earth is not the same as going uphill. In conclusion, I have shown that all the flat Earth claims about gravity are wrong. They misunderstand or intentionally misconstrue some very simple concepts. They deny or are ignorant of the tremendous evidence for the consistent effects of gravity. Centuries before man ventured into space, scientists figured out how gravity explains the movements of heavenly bodies, just as it explains the effects of objects here on Earth, and how it can easily explain how we can live on the spherical Earth without falling off. Since the time of Newton, we can very accurately predict these effects. Newton's laws of motion have been consistently proven by observation and experiment. And the Cavendish experiment proves that all objects with mass pull on all other objects with mass. Flat earthers who deny gravity have to deny hundreds of years of conclusive scientific observation and experiment. Thanks for watching.